Hello, I am Siddharth and I am here to present about the project Geometric. Geometric stands for Geo-Based Multi-Layer Environmental Modeling of Urban Traffic. Essentially, it is to improve the pollution assessment from urban traffic and it is a multi-layer model. That is, it includes different kinds of pollutants. And finally, this is all geo-based, that is, using geographical systems. And here is the team responsible for geometric. We have professors Roma Rampler, Jonas Mortensen, and Gyoso Gidofalvi from KTH. We also have collaborators, Andersh Bruberg from Stericom AB, Lucas Ulian from Shista Science City, and David Eskilson from Edeva. And also, of course, myself, Siddharth, who is currently doing a PhD under Roma Rampler. The overall vision of this project is to develop a framework for dynamically optimizing traffic. And the objective of this optimization is to reduce the emission footprint. And some of the objectives that we aim to reach are one, to promote Stockholm as a smart and connected city and this will be done through the kinds of technologies and tools used under this project. Another objective is to collect, process, and visualize traffic and traffic-related data. And a third objective is to develop more advanced and accurate tools. So to achieve this, here is a framework we are going to use. It begins with sensing. And this can be sensing the traffic, sensing also the pollutants from the traffic, such as noise and air pollutants. This data can then be used to be fed into micro traffic simulators. And so there are some models that will be needed to convert them and to do tasks like classification and distribution of the traffic. This micro traffic simulations can then be used for emission modeling one kind of modeling will be for noise, which will include a source and a propagation model. And there are also emission models for pollutants themselves, like air pollutants in this case. Finally, the outcome of these simulations allow for post-processing to evaluate relevant metrics and also visualizing them. An example of such a visualization is shown in the video. And this is for the noise exceedance or the noise exposure from vehicles on a road network. The rest of the presentation will focus in particular on noise as a pollutant. Firstly, why do we want to consider noise? Well, research shows that exposure to noise leads to many kinds of diseases and ill effects on the human body, such as heart disease, and also sleep disturbance and annoyance. Furthermore, it has been found that over 20% of the European Union's population are exposed to harmful levels of noise. And given that the urban population is only expected to increase, noise as a pollutant is expected to keep growing. Therefore, it makes sense that we need a more detailed assessment of noise exposure. And this will help us be able to make more effective mitigation plans. Let us now look at the noise evaluation framework. It begins with making noise measurements for the purpose of detecting and classifying vehicles. This information is then fed into micro traffic simulations. An example of this will be shown where the yellow ring corresponds to where the noise measurements were taken. This allows for simulating the vehicles on the adjacent road network. These micro traffic simulations can then be used in noise propagation simulations. Once again, here is an example. And this can help us to find the noise propagation exposure. Finally, the outcome of these simulations can then be used 
to check for validity and for fine tuning because they can then be compared with the original noise measurements. Here is a description of the current state of the sensor network. On an innovation test bed along Honskatan, there are four locations where there are noise sensors. Here is an example of what one of these locations looks like. And these sensors provide metrics that allow for detecting and classifying vehicles, as well as evaluating the noise levels at these locations. In two of these locations, we also have camera and radar sensors from Ediva. And these sensors give information about the times at which a vehicle passes that stretch of the road. This sensor network can be expanded to include a greater area around Stockholm. This noise data comes with an interesting challenge. For one, it is enormous in quantity, but it is also sensitive in nature. And keeping these two in mind, we can think of the noise data to belong to three kinds of data sets. What we call as weak data can be said to be moments where we know that a vehicle exists, but we do not know when it begins and when it ends. Strong data is when we know a vehicle exists and we also know when it begins and ends. And this known source, that is the known presence of a vehicle is through the help of Ediva's camera and radar sensors. There is also a third kind of data, which is considered as unlabeled, where we do not know what source exists and we also do not know when it begins and when it ends. Appropriate models are therefore being tested to use this noise data efficiently for the sake of detecting and classifying vehicles. Some of these models are presented along with their pros and cons. The first one is an analytical model, which can be considered as a signal peak detector algorithm. Now these are reliable and also relatively simple and robust to implement but they are limited in their ability to classify the vehicle. So they perform well in detecting a vehicle, but classifying them is not straightforward. Off the shelf data driven methods were also used. An example of this was the random forest classifier. And this one was relatively easy to implement, but such models were dependent on only the strong data, which are limited. And also the quality of the strong data, if they are limited, will reduce the accuracy of such models. And finally, these models also tend to be computationally expensive. A third interesting model that was tested was a student teacher learning paradigm that uses a CRNN or a convolutional recurrent neural network. Now, this model provides some interesting advantages. One is that it can even expand to non-vehicle sources by using existing data sets. And it can also perform better than the quality of the strong data that is provided. But because of the nature of this algorithm, it is a more complicated training procedure and it takes more effort to fine tune for this particular case at hand. Upcoming work in this project is in using this model in a more efficient way to serve, the to serve the purpose of detecting and classifying vehicles. Finally, some perspectives on how the outcome of this project relate to some identified sustainable development goals. One is in promoting a healthier life. For example, the detailed assessment of noise pollution can allow for correlating with existing or upcoming healthcare data sets. And this can help to identify and better protect vulnerable sections of society. Another is through citizen engagement and by being more effective at dealing with noise complaints. A second goal is in the improved sustainability of urban mobility. 
for example through methods such as dynamic geofencing and protection of silent zones also this kind of model can be merged with other models from various disciplines to create a digital twin that includes multiple layers thank you for listening